Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's true crime video is essentially one of the most bizarre cases you will come across. It's mysterious, it's slightly unsolved, people aren't really happy with the outcome of the investigators saying that it was solved. There are just so many questions surrounding this case and the evidence that we do have is so weird, so out of ordinary, just bizarre. If you know this case, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but if you don't know about this case, you are about to be blown away. And you'll probably be scratching your head at the end of this video trying to figure out what exactly happened. So in today's true crime video, we are going to be talking about the extremely mysterious case of Elisa Lamb. So let's get into who Elisa Lamb was. Elisa Lamb was a 21 year old student who was actually from Canada. She was going to the British Columbia University in Vancouver. In January of 2013, she decides to take a trip to the continental US, specifically on the West Coast, to just go on this long journey, this large trip. She specifically wanted to go to the large cities on the west coast of California. And this was actually a solo trip, so she was going on this very long trip all by herself. Elisa was actually really active on social media. She had all her social medias very public. She even had a blog that she wrote about. It was more a little bit of a journal. So when it came time to this west coast solo trip, she documented a lot of the trip and she wrote about her travels on her social media sites. During her trip, she spoke to family, her friends, she was constantly posting photos. So she seemed to be in a rather good place. You know, she was being adventurous, she was discovering different things, she was going on a trip by herself. Like I couldn't imagine the mindset she must have been in. It must have been freeing and just learning and seeing all these new things for the first time and documenting it, it seemed like she was in a really good place in her life. So on January 26th, she ends up reaching Los Angeles and she checks into the Cecil Hotel. This is where things start to get a little odd. So at the Cecil Hotel, she was actually supposed to be rooming in a hotel room with some roommates. But very shortly after arriving at the Cecil Hotel and being around these roommates, they complain and would like her to be moved out of the room because of her odd behavior. So that's kind of the first red flag in this case. Like what odd behavior was she possessing? Like is this just like a social anxiety issue or was she actually just being weird? Like. What the issue was, we don't really know, but we do know that a complaint was made and that they didn't feel comfortable rooming with her. So Elisa was moved out of that hotel room into her own hotel room at the Cecil Hotel. And just five days later, on January 31st, Elisa Lamb disappears without a trace from the hotel. Now Elisa had been posting about her trip the entire time, and then all of a sudden on January 31st, that interaction with her family and friends completely stopped. She's not posting on social media she just goes blank. There's no traces of her physically and there's no traces of her on the internet. So this obviously alarms her family for concern. So immediately a search was done throughout the hotel and they supposedly combed this hotel pretty tight trying to find any traces of Elisa. Her parents even flew down from Canada to Los Angeles to help with the search and to kind of spread the word about her missing appearance. But unfortunately, there was zero evidence for anything of Elisa. And granted, you know, she was on this trip alone, so she wasn't with friends or she really wasn't with anybody that they could rely on. And there were zero witnesses. They kind of put out to the public, you know, this is a missing person, showing Elisa's picture and trying to get the word out to see if anyone has spotted her. The only information the police come up with is that on that day, on January 31st, Elisa did go to a bookstore down the street from the hotel. And when they talked to the store owner who interacted with Elisa, he said she came in and acted like nothing was wrong. She didn't seem scared. She didn't seem in any sort of distress. So that just kind of raised even more red flags. And then the whole situation with the roommates complaining about her. The police are just looking for answers, not only to figure out what happened to Elisa, but also for her family. They're constantly trying to dig up more evidence. And then the biggest bomb of the case comes through when the Cecil Hotel reveals they have surveillance video of Elisa on the day she disappeared. Now this is the part of the case where people totally wig out and this is where it's going to get bizarre. The video of surveillance of Elisa is actually a elevator surveillance video. I'm gonna play the video and pull it up on the screen so you guys can see it if you hadn't because the total essence of this case 
has to involve this elevator evidence. So let's go ahead and play that and I'll comment over it about what's going on. So she gets in the elevator and she immediately starts pressing all of the buttons. Then she kind of stands off in the corner and just is kind of rigid and strange, but the elevator door doesn't shut. So she presses all the buttons, but nothing happens. And then she's kind of jumping out of the elevator to kind of like see if anyone's there and she jumps back in and then stands off in the corner. So it's kind of like she's hiding, but there's no one there. You don't see anybody, but the freaking elevator door doesn't shut. And she's just standing there and peeps out one more time. And you see how she's like trying to be like secretive about it, but she doesn't come in like running. It doesn't look like she's in distress. She just is doing these very weird things in the elevator. And see how she like jumped out all of a sudden and she's doing these very weird like foot movements like doing like a square dance or something and the elevator door is not shutting through all this even though she pressed all the buttons so now she's outside of the elevator there's no one there we don't see anybody else now she's like putting her head hands over her head If she is hiding from somebody, I mean, she's out in the wide open. So I'm not sure why she would be hiding in the elevator and then get out if she was scared of somebody. Okay, now she's getting back in the elevator and she presses all the buttons again. And the elevator door is not shutting. I don't know if her pressing the buttons has anything to do with the elevator door shutting. Like if she does that, will it disarm the elevator from shutting after she does that? Does it make it like a glitch? I'm not really sure, but... Now she's gonna come out of the elevator again. She's just standing there and now she's, look at her hands. Look at her like crouching, like she's feeling for something, like almost like she's petting something in the air, like with these weird wrist movements. Really like contorting motions, just very weird, like playing with her fingers almost. Elevator door still wide open, guys. Okay, she's putting her hands back over her head again, and now she's walking and she goes out of frame. Elevator door still wide open. So this is where I get mixed up of, she couldn't have been hiding from somebody because she's not in the elevator or was it something about the elevator that creeped her out? Elevator door still wide open. She's not in the frame anymore. And it finally shuts. Finally closes after we don't see Elisa anywhere in sight. But wait for it, guys. All the buttons are still pressed. You can see that they're still lit up. Freaking door opens again. And Elisa is nowhere in the picture. I can't tell if the elevator moved right then or not, but then it shut. So she was in that elevator doing all the weird things and the elevator door never shut. And then all of a sudden she gets out and it does it. Just very bizarre, very strange surveillance video. You can actually see the entire surveillance video on YouTube. I'll link the video down below if you wanna check it out yourself, but the elevator door ends up going to other floors. But that time when Elisa comes out and she kind of steps to the left out of frame, that is the last time Elisa is ever seen alive. There are so many theories surrounding this case as to what happened. And since this is really the only evidence, there's so many theories about this. A big theory is that she's hiding from somebody because she does that weird crouching motion when she gets into the elevator and then like jumps out several times. But I don't really know because if she was hiding from somebody and wanted to use the elevator as like, a secure room or as like an escape. She didn't like run in there like distressed. She didn't seem scared. She gets in and kind of just goes to the back and stands so like rigid. And then she starts acting weird and starts like jumping out the elevator back and forth. And then the weird like hand motion she uses weird me out and just how she could like kept putting her hands over her head and then it looked like she was petting something. Like I am more of the way that she may have been drugged or took some drugs, some psychedelic drugs maybe. Anybody can agree on that that is not normal behavior. Nobody that has been putting all their stuff on social media, we kind of know her personality and what she usually does based on that. 
And obviously for her family, it wasn't normal. Like that was not the normal Elisa. So the police release this footage and people are spooked and the theories start coming out of everywhere because this is the last time she's seen alive. They still don't know what happened to her after this. This is all they have. So what in the world happened to Elisa after she got off that elevator? And what was even happening on that elevator? So at this point, it has been three weeks. It is now February of 2013. There is still no sign of Elisa after that elevator footage. The public hasn't been able to help. There's just a ton of theories that are online as to what happened, but nobody really knows for sure. But three weeks after Elisa's disappearance and that surveillance video, Hotel guests at the Cecil Hotel start complaining of the water in the rooms. They say that the water pressure is really low, the water smells, has a really bad odor, and when they turn on the faucet, black sludge comes out of the sink. So after enough complaints, the maintenance guys of the Cecil Hotel end up investigating it. And on February 13th, 2013, they go on top of the roof which is where the water tanks were located. Now these are huge water tanks, like massive four of them on the roof in a very secure area. Nobody was able to get on the roof. There was no roof access for any guest. And that's just the safety hazard. They don't want people wandering around up there. They don't want people jumping off. They don't want people doing anything messing around the water tanks. And even the lid is very heavy that contains the water. Just to open it takes a lot of force. So when the maintenance guys go up on February 13th of 2013 to try to see what is going on with the water, they are shocked to see what they find in those water tanks. When they open one of the tanks, they find Elisa's naked waterlog body floating face down in the water tanks. And also all of her belongings are floating around her in the tanks. So this just raises this case to another level. And now it's going from a missing persons case to a possible murder or even a suicide. So how in the world did Elisa Lamb get into those water tanks nude with her belongings around her without anyone knowing anything? And this is the question because that area on the roof was very secure. There would have been no way for her to be able to get up there very easily. So then people start going through the theories. Okay, did somebody drug her? Is that why she was acting strange in the elevator and they disposed of her body in the water tank? Or was this a suicide? You know, she was showing very strange behavior in the elevator and she does have a past of having mental health issues. So was this a suicide? But if it was, why would she be nude? Why were her belongings being around her? And how the hell did she get on the roof, open the tank by herself and then close it and stay in there until she drowned? So people and police were definitely leaning more towards this could have been a suicide brought on by a psychotic episode. So investigators and everyone keeps looking at the elevator footage because that's really the only evidence. And the suicide with a psychotic episode seems to be the more prevalent theory. And also in the past, you know, Elisa was very active on social media. Elisa did talk about her depression on social media and her blog. Elisa actually suffered from bipolar disorder and took medication to help with it, and also depression medication. She had talked about this on her blog in the past, but before her trip, she seemed to be doing well with it. So it was very confusing of that she would just have this psychotic break staying at the Cecil Hotel. So with this being such a bizarre case, I think everyone was waiting on the autopsy results. But the autopsy results didn't come back for four months. That is a very long time for autopsy results to come back. It's usually very quick because people want answers. They want the case solved. Four months seems like a long time. When the results were released, it was even more confusing. People were going with the idea that this was brought on by drugs, that this was something that she took and caused her to have that psychotic episode in the elevator, which caused her to end up being put into the water tank by herself. But there were no drugs or alcohol found in her system. And there's a bunch of theories with that. You know, maybe she took a drug that did go away before they did the autopsy. Maybe it didn't stay in her body because maybe it was a drug that they don't normally test for. It could have been a natural drug. It could have been something she got off the streets in LA. There really wasn't anything on her body that would suggest that this was a murder, that she was harmed before being put into the water tank. And when the medical examiner released her cause of death, it was confirmed that she died of drowning. The police kind of wrapped this case up after the autopsy results are released and that she did die of drowning. They basically called it a suicide. They say that she was mentally unstable and had a psychotic episode and this was the outcome. 
which I think a lot of people kind of figured it would be because there was no evidence, but there still is so many strange circumstances surrounding it. By the chance of if she was going to commit suicide, if the drugs that she took or she had a psychotic break, why would she go about the way she did? It just seems like a lot. Like the water tanks are located on top of the roof. She would have had to have planned to go up there. And if she's in the middle of the psychotic break, she wouldn't be thinking clearly or if she was on medication or types of drugs. I don't know if she would be able to maneuver her way and to get to that secure area. I don't know why she would get undressed and then do everything she could to open the lid. The lid of the water tanks were no joke. Like they're heavy. So she would have to have picked them up jump in there or throw her belongings in there, jump in the water tank and then close it knowing she would never be able to open it and just stay in the water tanks and drown. It just seems like a really roundabout way to commit suicide, to go that far, especially if she was somehow able to get on the roof. Why wouldn't she just jump off the roof? But I don't know, it's, it's strange. I don't know who would harm her or make her take drugs that would make her do what she did in the elevator and then find a way to get her on the hotel without anybody seeing, you know, get her on the roof and then put her in the water tank. It just seems either way, it's weird. But the police closed this case, but as you can tell by the elevator footage, there's just so much more to this case that people think that are more theories on the internet, just that don't believe that she committed suicide by this. The Cecil Hotel is an infamous hotel in Los Angeles. A lot of stuff has happened there. Like serial killers have gone through there. There's just been a lot of strange circumstances. So a lot of people believe this as paranormal, that maybe the elevator was possessed because when she walks into the elevator, it doesn't look like anything's wrong with her. Could this be supernatural? Could she have been possessed by something in the Hotel Cecil? She only started acting strange and stopped posting on social media and speaking to her parents when she checked into the Cecil Hotel on January 26th. So could it be supernatural? It's anyone's guess. Elisa's family did end up filing a lawsuit against the Cecil Hotel for the wrongful death of her daughter. In their investigation, they did check the roof right when she went missing. So I'm not sure why they didn't think to look in the water tanks. Maybe they thought that the lids are too heavy, nobody would be able to get in there. I'm not really sure, but they were not impressed with the police investigation of this case and that they thought Elisa should have been found a lot earlier. Especially when you have guests complaining of the water. I mean, when you think about it, people were drinking out of the water Elisa's dead body was floating in for three weeks. That is so disgusting that people were drinking that water. There's not a lot of evidence to this case, guys. It's just bizarre. Like I cannot say that enough times in this video. Did she do this to herself or did it involve drugs? Who knows? Or was it even something paranormal? But at the end of the day, Elisa Lamb is still gone. She was 21 years old at the time of her death and the police deem this as solved, but her family and a lot of other people won't ever believe that. I'm not really sure what I think. Every time I look at that elevator footage, I just go back and forth, but I'm very interested into seeing what you guys think, especially if you've never heard of this case and this is your first time seeing the footage and hearing of Elisa Lamb. But that is it today for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any videos here on my channel. And I will see you guys in my next video.